A vast majority of companies in the S&P 500 actually pays dividends to their shareholders. So in 2022, if your stock is down 10% year to date, but yielding 4%, then your total return is down 6%. Now, I have a dividend only portfolio that specifically tracks the performances of my dividend stocks. And my plan is to continue to dollar cost average my investments and reinvest my dividends. My fire number is $3.7 million and I'm planning to have at least $1 million invested in dividend stocks. Our dividend income is going to be our primary income during our early retirement. Now, let me nerd out with you for the next minute to show you how dividend investments generally work. Let's say I'm investing $50,000 a year into the dividend stock portfolio and it's yielding 5% annually. That's $2,500 in annual dividends I'm reinvesting every year. I'm also choosing specific dividend stocks that have growth potential. So let's say each stock is growing on average 3% annually in capital gains. That's $1,500 added to the portfolio. So theoretically, by the end of year one, I would have $54,000 invested with an 8% total return. In year two, I invest another $50,000 into my dividend stock portfolio. I'm going to keep the numbers as generic as possible because I would normally dollar cost average the $50,000 biweekly. By the end of year two, not only the investment from year one would accumulate 7% in growth with dividend reinvestment and capital gains, but I would also have 7% or 8% growth in the $50,000 investment from year two, that's a total of $5,200 in dividend payment with a 5% dividend yield, $3,120 in capital gains if it gains 3% for the year, and a total of $111,320 by the end of year two. And I also want to show you the spreadsheet and you can download it for free by visiting firesidechat.com contact. When you download your free financial independence resources, you're going to get a weekly email from me about budget savings and investing strategies. I'm pretty conservative with how my dividend portfolio will perform in the next 10 years. I'll be happy if I can get a 7% average annual return with the dividend reinvestment. With $50,000 a year in contributions, starting with $150,000 in the starting balance, I should have a million dollars invested by the time I turn 45 years old. One thing I want you to keep in mind is that you don't have to invest like this in just dividend stocks because they're generally uh, large cap stocks um, and have slower growth, right? Not to mention you're paying outrageously more taxes if you're making more than six figures a year in taxable income. You can choose to be more aggressive by investing in uh, small or medium cap stocks that can help you grow 10 to 15 or, or even 20% in capital gains annually, which are not taxable until you sell the stocks, right? This is not any form of financial advice. I personally put more money into growth stocks that have a higher return potential than I do with dividend stocks. And when I'm uh, ready to retire early, then I can move some of the assets to the dividend stocks to generate that dividend income. And you can check out this video about how to save taxes during your early retirement. And I will put the link in the description below. In the year 2022, most dividend stocks are down significantly, which makes their dividend yield higher while the stock prices are cheaper. And the formula for the dividend Yield is the company's annual dividend divided by the stock price. So if you buy a stock that pays you $1 in annual dividend yield and the stock trades at $20, then you're going to divide 1 by 20, which gives you 0.05 or 5% annual dividend yield. And let me do the reverse math on this. If I own five shares of a stock at $20 per share and it's yielding 5% annually, then I own $100 total of the stock and pay $5 annually for the dividend payments. And let's say the stock price goes down 20% due to a bear market like we're seeing in 2022, then the stock price becomes $16 per share and now it's yielding 0.0625 or 6.25% annually. So now I have $80 total for the five shares that I own and the annual dividend is still $5. And if you invest in individual stocks, you need to pay especially closer attention to the company and see if they're declining in growth. The dividend stocks I invest in are the companies I believe in for the long term. And if you invest in index funds or ETFs that pay you dividends, 
you'll most likely come out on top in the long term but they're not going to be yielding as high as individual stocks and if any of the fundamentals change that's going to negatively affect the stock prices in the long term then that's when i sell out of the stock and let me show you one of my stocks on schwab as an example and this video is not sponsored by schwab i just really like their broker and the ease of use and i'm going to use uh, Verizon stock as an example and I'm going to cover the other stock so you can focus on this one stock this stock is down almost 25 percent year to date at the time I'm recording this video the four PE is seven so the valuation of the stock is relatively low if you compare it to other cell phone companies like AT&T and T-Mobile I'm expecting Verizon's earnings to decline by four to five percent in 2022 but it's likely going back up in 2023 2024 and beyond in 2021 i received 50 dollars in dividend income because i just started to build its position and i now have 276 shares with a market value of eleven thousand dollars in the next 12 months i'm looking to receive 720 dollars in dividend income yielding 6.6 percent so not only am i buying the stock with a 25 percent discount but i'm also getting at least a 6.6 percent return in dividend income so it's not so much the fact that the market value is down over 25 percent year today but it's the new shares i'm continuously buying now that will continue to grow back to the 50s and 60s in the price range with dividend reinvestments and Verizon is also a company with a long track record of generating strong revenue and net income. And it has been increasing dividends every year uh, for the last 18 years as a component of the S&P 500. And it's only seven years away from becoming a dividend aristocrat. And if you don't know what that is, a dividend aristocrat is a company that has been paying and raising dividends for 25 straight years, while a dividend king is a company that has been paying and raising dividends for 50 straight years. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on Verizon and the dividend investment strategy. And by the way, if you need help with your personal finances like budget, savings, and investments, you can schedule a free one-on-one 20-minute -on -one financial coaching session by visiting firesidechat.com coaching. When I retire, I can just withdraw my dividends instead of reinvesting them. If I'm yielding 4% annually, then I can withdraw up to $40,000 a year just in dividends. So. If on average, the dividend portfolio gains 7% annually, I can withdraw 4% annually while the stocks grow 3% annually. And that's probably the best case scenario, right? Obviously, that's not the case in 2022. Some of my stocks are down uh, 10, 20, and 30%. Just keep in mind that at, as the stock prices drop, your dividend yield increases. But you want to make sure that dividend stocks you're buying are increasing their dividend payouts every year. You also want to make sure they have a solid business model and not a company that's potentially going bankrupt and stopping dividend payments. And let's say I had uh, $100,000 invested in Verizon by the time I retire. If it's yielding 6% annually, that's $6,000 a year I'm going to receive in dividends instead of reinvesting right back into the stock. Just imagine if I had 10 stocks with $100,000 each, then that's a total of $1 million. If the portfolio on average pays a 6% annual dividend yield, then that's $60,000 a year in passive income. Now, let me show you some other stocks that I'm currently buying or looking to buy in the near future. And they're all yielding at least 4% annually. Walgreens Boots Alliance is down over 38% year to date, and it's yielding 5.85% in annual dividend yield. Nordstrom is another stock that is down over 25% and it's yielding 4.23% annually. Whirlpool, and it's one of my favorite brands, is another stock I'm looking to buy, and it's down almost 40% year to date, and it's currently yielding almost 5% annually. 3M is a very attractive company that's paying 5.2% in annual dividend yield, and it's down almost 37% year to date. And I haven't seen a valuation this low in a long time, probably ever in my lifetime. And Foot Locker's valuation is at 7x their earnings and paying 4.6% in annual dividend yield. This stock is down about 23% year to date. And another stock I'm interested in is Ally Financial, and it's yielding 4% with the stock down over 40% year to date. But don't invest in stocks just based on the dividend yield. I'm always looking at the company's dividend payout ratio, uh, forward PE, price to sales ratio, 
gross profit margins, cash flow statements, and balance sheets like their assets and debts. If you're not the type of person who likes to take the time to do research on your stocks, you always have the option to invest in index funds or ETFs. And those are the, uh, those ETFs like S&P 500 index fund or ETFs, they actually pay you dividends. They're just a little lower, right? And if you want to know more about how to invest in dividend stocks, be sure to check out these two videos. So with that said, I appreciate you watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.